Okay, testing one, two, three. Hey, let me remind you that Forex is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never when you cannot afford to lose. Right, Richard? Hey, my name is Ben McDonald. I'm the chief FX market strategist for TradersWay.com. We're a boutique Forex trading firm. We'd like to be the prime broker for your successful Forex trading business. You may not be a successful Forex trading business yet, so that's why I'm here every day for you. Um, I want you to succeed, and I'm here to share my, uh, you know, I don't know, a dozen or more years of trading experience with you. Rich, Rick, Rick, Ricard? <laughs> So do these sessions every single day, Monday through Thursday here at Forex.today for free, every Friday at FX Street for money, and uh, I'm also Forex Speaker of the Year. And uh, Richard says, hey, I hope he loves Forex as much as I do. Are you talking about me? Rich Rad. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me just be honest with you. I'm usually the happiest guy you'll ever meet especially when it comes to Forex traders, because we're a grumpy bunch. Uh, I'm not in a good mood today, though. <laughs> I don't want to be in this webinar today. I don't. I'm like, ah! But I love Forex so much, and I respect our community so much, and the, the traders above and below you over there in the chat. I love it. I, I, I just I, I, I have to do it because... I have a team, and I have to. I can't let my team down. So sometimes we all have grumpy days, right? So I'm in. I don't even know if I'm grumpy. I'm just. Uh, I want to get away. Want to fly away, right? So a lot of things just hasn't gone my way recently. So bah, bah. So have you ever gotten in one of those moods? Your perfect trade setups haven't produced anything. You're like. Ah! Now this is gold today. Yeah, I'm on gold. I guess we could start there. So, you know, I guess it's it's one of these things. Um, we knew the yens would get strong. They got strong. We knew they wouldn't be strong forever. And you don't know when the move is going to end. And I, I wasn't quite ready for the yen strength to end. And it might have ended. Last year, the yen strength stayed longer. Is, is this a short year? Is this just Trump inauguration stuff? Is you know, is is the short term short over and the long term long is back? And if so, how, what kind of pattern does that produce? Because if so, if it's too early, we may get a yen rally and then a long term collapse. So I don't know. It's just I'm in one of those situations where you know, ah, rah, rah. <laughs> I don't know, but. Is it okay for your uh, for your coach or your mentor to say stuff like that? That I don't know and I'm frustrated. No. I mean, it's a different point of view. No. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well. Bad coach, bad coach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is trade after all, right? <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's get back to the, you know, get on with it. All right, fine. So one of the things, especially let's say if you are in a frustrating mood, and by the way, let's be grateful. If I if I grabbed that webcam and I shined it out over there, um, the sun is rising and I can't see the sun. To the left, the skies are purple and then sort of light bluish gray. And then all of a sudden, the clouds just turn like a rippling pink and purple. And then that is being reflected on the water of the lake. And so the, that, the heaven and the earth has just turned pink. Oh, hold me. Yeah. So anyways, we got something to be grateful for, right? There's always a new day. And it could be beautiful. Yeah. So anyways. All right, so let's go back. What are the facts, Jack? Are we at support or are we at resistance? Well, unfortunately, we're kind of at both. 
Um, okay, let's zoom in a little bit. I would consider monthly M4, weekly M3, that could act as support, but you can clearly see the 21 is in play. So uh, I'm almost going to treat this as neutral and trade a breakout strategy. Breakout strategy being, you know, um, if it breaks down, I behave in one way. If it breaks up, I behave in another way. And everything in between, I ignore. What do you stink? Smell like a plan? So what I'm saying is, if it breaks down, you play it like this. If it breaks up, you play it like this. But even then, I'm going to be worried because of my bias, right? So, for example, you could take a screenshot, put this on Forex dot today, type in a, a few sentences of like why you're worried about this. You're like, you see the 21 currently is a down resistance, but you see this is a double bottom, right? And then this cluster of pivots all sort of muddying up your waters. So, therefore, the strategy you want to employ is a breakout strategy, being you know A and B, right? Submit, done. You bought it at 12-er? Yeah, that makes sense, right? So for that, you need continued dollar weakness. That's fine. That's fine. If you're looking at uh, dollar index charts, we did hit a cluster of weekly M2, monthly M2. That's weird, huh? So anyways, and then it dropped. Okay, we're, we're getting pretty close to support again on US dollar index, so whatever. So we'll see how it plays, but that's what I'm thinking anyways, where I see support and resistance. And the sky is, now, the, now where the sun is going to be, it's getting brighter and brighter, and the, the pink is spreading all over the sky and the lake. How cool. Uh, fib, uh, fib uh, no, I wouldn't do that. So I, I'd stay out of the middle is what I'm trying to say, guys. Oops. I'll stay out of the middle. Okay. In fact, if I had to do anything here, I would sell it off the 21 off this gray zone. But I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. Okay. That kind of thing. Life is great. Life is grand. Life is good. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, looking at it from here, kind of smells like a further dip, and then maybe up to the shoulder, and then neckline break and drop. Right, doesn't it? You take this distance here. We'll call that the neckline. So projection would be about the same height. What do you think? Because you know I'm a bear anyways, right? You already know that. So you can interpret what's going through my brain. <clears throat> There's resistance in there, right? Down to where our new low is. Up into the moving average. Down, basically. You get that? You have to do that with the... You have to filter it through your bearishness, right? A bull wouldn't see that. Okay? But if I was a bull... Okay, I'm going to look at it more like this and like this and like this. We'll probably monkey around it here. If I was a bull, okay, I'd say one more dip up, not quite ready yet, break out, oops, pull back, gone. That's what a bull would think on this time frame. Okay. But, you know, 
if a, as a bear, I'm looking at 2155 cross, that, that gives me permission to be bearish, right? So you see what I'm telling you? Like, if you wanted to be a bull because of the 2155 cross, you could have bought gold down here at the end of December. Isn't that neat? So that's amazing, right? You could have bought it a month ago. All right, I shouldn't be so, I shouldn't exaggerate. 29 days ago, based on that 2155 cross, the 2155 cross down takes you out. Right? Oh, is the mic low? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a thing that does that. La 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 la. la. Is that better? Yeah. Da 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 yeah, so imagine just the 2155 cross, right? Straight out of the book. Straight out of Compton, right? Straight out of the book, isn't it? Right? 2155 cross up. Out. And then what would the book say now? And of course, I'm talking about my book, not the Bible. This is the neutral zone, right? That's the fair market value. We're not far from that. But you should be looking for selling rallies. Okay? It's a little, it's not perfectly clear because we are close to the neutral zone. But the 2155 is clearly down, and the 2155 should act like a cloud if you're used to your iki wuki noko hoko moko moko choko. Right. So if you were short in here, makes sense. If you were long down here, that makes sense too, but you got to filter that through bullish eyes. So yesterday, I left you with the Kiwi Yen, was it Kiwi Yen? No, Pound Yen short based on a Pound Dollar setup. Do you guys remember that? Really, the mic is bad? Shouldn't be bad. Let me double check the settings. Maybe it's... Sounds different than other days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, you hear like you're underwater. How dare you? Oh, no, you didn't. Don't you pin your hate on me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it happened to Suge, huh? Yeah, listen to Suge. All right. Oh, guess what? ECB is going to do nothing. Yay, ECB. What a shocker. I still cannot figure out their less for longer. You know, I think if I was a like an investment banker, I'd be really worried about Europe. You know, like how last year or the year before we were worried about China and China was going to blow up. And what if this happened? What if that happened? You know, the China risk, the China risk. I think Europe is in serious trouble right now, huh? Like, really, like, 
what are they doing? What ha well, like we can argue from past tense. What have they done since the financial crisis to improve their economy? Let's say, like, really, honestly, not a whole lot. I think the banks are still in jeopardy. But now they've lost the UK because of their socialist pig dog nonsense, right? So, uh, wow, like, oh, my God. And the central bank has basically said they can't do any more or they won't do any more. And that leaves it to the governments. And now, you know, we're going to put some uh, more crazy people in power, <laughs> right? So I don't know. It's uh, it's not it's not feeling good. Do hmm? you feel the same? Someone was telling me that some idiot Americans are like leaving the United States. They because of Trump, they just they just can't stand Trump. Oh, this it's such a uh oh Trump, right? Oh, I just can't live in America if Trump is in power. Bunch of babies, right? Seriously, like real people doing this, right? So like, but my first thought is like, well, where the hell are they gonna go? France? Yeah, a bunch of crybaby Hollywood types. No, but like these are. People I know know people like this. Yeah, where are they going to go? <laughs> right? So anyways, and they're like, okay, look, I understand you hate Trump, but everyone else hated Hillary. That's why we have democracy. And then let's say it's a it's a, it's a, a, po a political party issue. I just can't live in an America with Republicans in charge. Well, the Democrats had the show for many many years, and it's nothing good happened. We had a global financial crisis. I don't remember the Obama administration doing anything except cars for clunkers. You know what I mean? And don't get me started on foreign policy. Like, right? So I'm like, I'm not like anti-Obama, though. It's just like, I look at the track record, and I'm like, well, not a lot of amazing things. I don't know why Obama won the Nobel Prize. I think that was a disgrace. The, 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 what good happened? Well, I guess Obamacare, but it was, they released it like a bunch of idiots. But I guess it's better to have social health insurance, kind of, right? But it, it, it wasn't done well. But what else? And they're like, well, what are the bad things that happened? Well, there was that whole, you know, Benghazi thing, and we gave away Syria and the Middle East. We lost our allies in Egypt. We lost our allies in Turkey. The Russians are running the show globally now, even affecting our own regulate, you know, our own elections. They're like, well, who's in charge when all this went down? Oh, Hillary. Oh. So I just look at it like factual, like, oh, well, I can't have that. So anyways, I don't know, running, moving away. If you moved out of the way from the United States because you just hated Trump so much, where would you go that's better? I guess Canada, right? Everybody loves Canada, except the winters. So anyways, I digress. Uh, Euro sucks, right? So um, is this a good opportunity to sell Euro? Uh, I don't see it yet. How about you? So I look at that and say, yeah, I want to sell euro. I want to sell, uh, I want to buy yen. Unfortunately, uh, all of that's changed and I, I need to be careful that that move is over. And that's what I was crying about. What if my yen strength is over already? But I guess it is third week, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure I did talk about third week of January, but last year it just did, it ran for many more weeks, right? Yeah. So Jimmy says, uh, James says we're at resistance now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But not on everything. So like, CAD yen is still issuing a, a bearish mode, right? Right. That still feels bearish, right? You see this rollover. What do you call that? It's 
it's not quite what I'm, but what's the analogy I use to describe, I guess on the daily, what analogy do I use to describe the market rolling over and reversing? No. I haven't used it in a while, so that's right. The Forex market reverses like an old man easing into a hot bath. Yeah, I wrote that in my book, and people tell me it's the worst book ever written. Not like worst Forex book or worst trading book, but the worst book ever. I'm like, you know, there's some colorful things in there that I think is actually a reasonable amount of good writing. I write good. <laughs> there's my T-shirt, right? I-R-I-G-H-T, good. I write good. But anyways. Um, so anyways, I, I like that. So maybe this rolls over and heads down. Then you look at the correlation, though, and you're like, all right, so they all should be falling, right? And then you look at this, and you're like, oh, snap. That doesn't look bearish on this time frame. Let's see. Well, See, we're, we're supposed to be down here is what my pattern was predicting. And we never got through 80. We hit 80. I'm expecting we should be at 78 by now, except we're at 82 on our way to 83. And that doesn't feel very bearish to me. Right? And so when I see when I see Kiwi dollar up, CAD dollar down, first of all, I do think there's some oil in going on. Oil must be down. But also I don't have currency correlation. I have a commodity currency going up. Of another commodity currency going down, and then yen. I I was planning on having to be strong, but I'm not seeing it right now, and that's why I cry into my beer, right? <laughs> it's frustrating, huh? Too old for this nonsense. St Stupid charts. <laughs> so yesterday and the day before, we had a trade plan that worked beautifully. This was going to go up. Great. After this beautiful gap. Remember, this is a gap. Right? We hit here, which you're supposed to take profit. And based on that, based on pivot point theory that I've taught you, it's supposed to go back to here. Okay, and then at this point, I can't tell you whether it's going to continue up or down. I just can't. I've I've never seen any pattern, so I I don't even know if it's fifty fifty. I mean, I I don't know. I, I just I have no idea. I was hoping we'd be doing this, in fact, but the theory suggests we have to touch the central pivot. So we did. So now what? Do we do this now? And you know, I don't know. And maybe this is all just risk risk off or risk on um, for Trump and then it collapses you know I, I, I can't say I don't know I, I don't know any more than you but um, you know I don't know I just I don't know I don't know I don't know so we're we're in this place where I kind of need to watch it and have the market tell me because you know I'm not a market mover yet I don't move the market so I understood all of this, you know, down in here, I was the smartest trader in the world. I knew everything. But now that we're like 100 pips higher, I, I don't know anything. I'm, in, I'm a monkey head. Right? I'm just a big bonehead now. So if it comes down, I'm going to play the previous plan. And but you know the next week's pivots are going to be about the same, and that's a trend killer, isn't it? When this week's pivots are basically the same as last week's pivots, so you know I, I it's just like in gold, um, I'm sort of now have to go into wait and see, right? 
I don't, but I don't like being in wait and see mode, right? But isn't that the right way to play it? So, pivot point theory suggests that this could be the ultimate top. So, sell at 142, 141.50. There's a, a daily cluster in there. 141.50, 142. Looks like 141.73 and 141.50. His weekly daily cluster. I mean, I, I think we'll have to battle this out. And it might just be, like I said, the Trump thing. And it, it could be like really dumb price action today and tomorrow. Like, let's buy everything in the world because Trump is going to fix everything. And he's going to spend money and spur the economy. Like, oh, my God, really? That's what you think? Yeah. Let's say all of that's true. It's going to take years before that hits the real economy. Years. So why would you just dump every, you know, buy everything on, on inaugural day or something? So I, I, I don't know. But it could happen, right, that we just get this giant rally, uh, the Trump effect, if you will, none of which I believe Trump a asked for. I think it's just the stupid market. So uh, great, so great. So maybe this major exit turns into be a major entry for everybody else. And I can't really say w whether that's true or not because I don't really know. And this year is different than other years. And, you know, it's not just, you know, it's just not the, the first day of the presidency, but it's a first day of a new president and all that kind of stuff. It only happens every eight years, right? So, no, because, well, it could happen every four, but, you know. Um, but, so, anyways, there's not a lot of precedent for me. I, you know, I've only been doing this 15 years, right? So, what, what dumb people do with their money based on some, an event like this, yeah, maybe they just buy everything up prematurely. And that, you know, that puts me in a weird situation because if we get this giant rally, now, then we're going to face what April, May, June coming down, I think. And I'm going to have to research that and kind of redo all my work. And how do you feel like if you have to redo your work? Don't you hate it? I don't even like thinking that my, my point of view might be wrong, but it's something I have to do, right? So <laughs> that's that's where I am. That's where I am emotionally. Like we're not supposed to be up here. We could maybe it's just a little a little you know inauguration day rally. And if we get this going, that's cool. Um, let it fall to February, and then after non-farm payrolls, then then we buy it up. So I, I, maybe I'm just being nitpicky. Yeah, yeah. Hold on to your lug nuts. Time for an overhaul. It could be, right? So, I don't know. I guess maybe I had too much hope where I, I wanted this to run a little further. Um, so, like, when I look at the CAD yen, right, I want to be, I want to be, I want CAD yen, for example. It's just an easy one to look at because it's still bearish. We're riding the 4-hour 21 down, which I've already showed you, right? Uh, here's daily now, riding the daily five, it looks bearish, right? So at the very least, I would like to trade it down here. What do you think? Right? And of course, next month, if this ends lower, next month's target's going to be about here. So yeah. I'd rather be trading this down to, to 80 before we buy it up or something, right? You know what I mean? So that's that's what I want there. Or 78. And, uh, you know, uh, now we're splitting hairs. I don't, yeah, I mean, I would have to look at, how things end and re reanalyze, but 78 and 80, to me, it's the same thing. I don't care. Down.
But then I look at the other pairs now, and they say up. And I'm like, WTF? And it's not supposed to be like that, right? So we just got to wait. That's all. Be calm. Be cautious. I don't want to lose a ton of money. So you got to play it smart, right? So just. And if all the other yen pairs up, do I buy this one? But, you know, CAD sucks, right? I wrote a whole paper uh, at Harvard about. Uh, the Canadian economy versus the Eurozone. Uh, in, in particular, it was the dichotomy in central banking policies between the Bank of Canada and the European Central Bank. Is that funny? And yeah, I actually did that. <laughs> what do you do with your free time? Um, yeah, so, uh, but one of the things I, I talked about was that one of the strengths of Canada is that it does have a, an independent bank and it can react to things like falling oil prices and it can devalue its currency. And Canada is the United States's number one trading partner. And so suddenly if commodity prices fall and Canadians are not making a ton of money on that, then the value of the Canadian dollar can fall, and it often falls as much as 50%. Then what happens is Canadian labor force becomes attractive. So if you had to choose, do you export jobs to Canada or do you export jobs to Mexico? Very often you could say, oh, well, maybe Canada's closer, or you like the, the, the laws a little better, or it's the type of thing that just needs to be done in Canada versus Mexico, whatever. But it's a valid choice now if the Canadian dollar is worth 50, 50 cents US, right? Because now you can get a McGill grad for, uh, you know, I don't know, what do you pay a guy? 20 bucks an hour instead of your guy? 40 bucks an hour or the other way around? It's like you're paying them 20 even though you're, whatever, you get it, right? So now they're competitive, they have a competitive labor force. But when the, when the global economy is booming, Canada gets paid on the commodity side. So it, you actually get a fairly stable economy. Cool, huh? Now, the ECB can't do it, right? I don't know, Richard. I don't like the tone of your typing. Let's uh, let's look for another risk off scenario. Like I said, I'm grumpy today. Yeah, you should make Uncle Wayne feel good. All right. So here we are again. Right? Do you remember doing this? Support, resistance, resistance. Okay. If it turns north here, then we have a step up move. Okay. You can't sell here is the number one obvious rule. Number two, the next target's there. And then three, if it breaks out, you buy a pullback. Okay. There's 
know what I'm talking about? Oscillators. Do you use oscillators in a trending market or in a range bound market? Okay. Are we in a trending market now or a range bound market now? Yeah, it's range. So this oscillator is important, isn't it? So you say the daily stokes may turn up, but remember, you ignore it unless you're at support or resistance, right? You know that rule? If your oscillator says up, but you're not at support, forget it. It's stupid. Ignore it. If you're at support and your oscillator says up, drop into a smaller time frame and get ready to go, right? Swiss C is hot to go. H O T T O G O. Oh, right. Yeah. So you drop into an hourly and say, ooh. Okay. Are you going to, what are you going to do if we get a scenario like this? You know what? I got my drawing tool. Why don't we keep it doing it the hard way? Uh, so what if we get a scenario like this? Ugh. Ugh. Where are you going to get in on that? Do you think that's going to happen? Well, it's a, a little bit risque, right? Because we haven't made a significant move yet, but it's plausible, isn't it? So that's what a plan is. It's plausible. If you didn't already sell it high, right? So look, this is obvious, right? I don't even really need to say it. If you're a bear, you already have that set up and you already took the shot, right? I mean, so that's, that's done. Okay. Look at the oscillator. Like, look at the green light on this, huh? 5A cross down, tulumum. So that's obvious, right? Don't even need to say that. So now, if you're not a bear, you're a bull and you're expecting a change in direction. And remember this red zone? I identified like two weeks ago for you as a buy zone. Okay, so anyways, we're down here. So what if the next move is, uh, you know, just like I said, how about to here, bare minimum? Buy it at 105 or whatever it is. One, one, buy it at one, the psychological level of parity. And then maybe US dollar gets strong, so it's one and a half. So do you think this red zone where it bounce, 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 bounce at parity, is that a tradable zone? Well, Brandon, Brandon says something about, uh, well, what about on the smaller time frame? Is it trending? Well, I want you to start your analysis on the higher time frame, make a decision, then drop down. So don't get this. Like, oh, it's it's range bound on the four hour, but it's trending on the fifteen minute, you know. No, 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 no. Okay. If it's range bound on the four hour, it's range bound. The next question is, are we at support or resistance? If you don't have an answer on that on the four hour, then don't trade it. Okay? If you don't have an answer on the four hour, you're just simply looking for new and creative and unique ways to lose money. Okay. And there's always new ways to lose money, right? And people say to me, like, oh, I'm really good at technical analysis, but I'm a break-even trader. And then I look at the trading, and they're like, all right, well, you're doing really good trading strategies in very mediocre markets, <laughs> right? Sometimes I buy at support, and it works, and sometimes I buy at support, and it doesn't work. That's well, because you're applying a good strategy in all markets. You don't do things like say, oh, it's range-bound on the long term. Therefore, I'm not expecting big moves and breakouts. I'm expecting consolidation. Right? And what if you only bought at support on the four hour when the 15 minute wanted to go up? And what if you only sold at resistance on the four hour, but only when the 15 minute chart wanted to go down? 
oh, wait, that's what my book says. Right? But we know we're all guilty, even myself, that we don't always quite do that, right? But you know when you do your when you analyze your losing trades, you go, Oh, what was I doing? Right? Right? Hang on. Hang on, I got something. Hang on. Everybody look away. Um uh, hang on, yes, it will happen. Two thirty AM E T. All right, so, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. All right, let's take a look. La, 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 la. Luffley, tell your mom, huh? What a nice little website. So I am going to start with Julie's post. <laughs> knock, 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 knock. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Wait for it, Richard. Wait for it. All right. Because of my uncertainty surrounding European political and economic outlook, I'm a bear of the euro. Well, first of all, I, how can you not like that? Boop. All right. ECB is not yet, but yep, yep. All right, so ECB has continued to do nothing. Market direction bears below 25, 21.55 EMA in price action in here. Got it. You're all Aussie, huh? Wow. Okay. So buying Aussie. All right, well, you better be bullish on Aussie then. Anyways. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. Target is M1. Okay. Ooh. Uh, so, all right. So, this is a squeeze play. Because you, you're you're hoping that the 21 just squeezes it through support. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that could happen. Look at the psych level. 141.00. 0, 0. 
Uh, typically, you wouldn't sell there, right? So you let it drop, then you let it come back, and generally you sell in the 90s or at or at zero zero, and your stop is above 41.20, and your target would be uh, 40.50. So I call that an 80-20 play. So break low, come back to the 80-20, and then down. What do you have there? Oscillator not helping at all. But it's trending, that's why you don't use it. So here's the real play. Okay, break out, pull back, sell up here at 41 and a half, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so the only thing is your Aussie, you know, that you need to be bullish on Aussie. Aussie's coming up to a double top at 86 on Aussie yen. Uh, we're, at a, we're at a top area on Aussie dollar, both of which I showed you, I think, yesterday or the day before. For example, Aussie dollar on the daily chart is caught on the monthly M4. And on the four-hour chart, on the weekly R1, which is preventing Aussie from appreciating versus the dollar, and, of course, a double top at 87, should challenge Aussie versus yen. So Euro, the euro side of it I'm okay with. I'm just not terribly bullish on Aussie. So I guess I'll say that. I'm okay with the euro uh, bearishness. I'm not entirely convin con convinced that the odd will ap appreciate much more in the near term when I look at odd USD or odd JPY. Cool. All right. Thank you for that. Okay, what in the world is this? Okay, Richard says, if there is a bounce of the resistance two candles down, you consider selling a stop. All right, so this is S&P, huh? Uh, I don't see a lot of detail here. It'd be nice if you could like uh, do something like um, you had it marked like this. I think is what you're saying. Let's take a look at like uh, yeah. Now let's take a look at what the facts are. The facts are we have not broken into this zone. Okay. That, and the facts are that there are there is support here and of course support in here. So yeah, if you if, if you're going to filter this through the eyes of the bear, then that seems reasonable to me. Um, I don't often like using fibs. I, I'm not saying you are, but this is what it feels like. Right? It feels like a fib to me. Um, and you wouldn't do that in a range-bound market. Um, I would like to see an oscillator here, but generally speaking, I, I'd like it to come up more. Okay, I'd like to sell it more like here. 
So I'm not really sure where your sell zone is. If you think you're in your sell zone now, I'm a little cautious because you know, that's sort of a trending move. Uh, I guess you're using this and maybe some of that as a role reversal, but it doesn't have to go down that way, right? You know what I mean? It just doesn't have to go down that way. And when you're range bound, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. The, when it, I think if it does fall here, it's going to be a, a, a mighty big fall, at least to the bottom resistance. Okay? Because if it falls, what it'll end up being is a lower high, right? Top, top, right? Top, and then, right? Then what? Top, and then top. So then that moves everything this way. And that would suggest more, more down, right? So at a bare minimum, the target would be sort of down in here based on this low, and then sort of wait and see. Well, you use Fibonacci in a trending market, and I would not call this a trending market, okay? So my basic assumption, okay, in a scenario like this, my basic assumption is if you bought here, it's going up here. Okay. So um, <clears throat> yeah, if you could have a little more descriptive of a chart, uh, it'd just be easier to interpret. All right. What should we do? What's the time? Uh, uh, uh. Well, let's do this one. Oops. Do I click edit? Yeah, sorry. Only I can do that. All right, there we go. Okay. Boy, it looks like the same trade plan I just did. 
your Aussie. Did I just? It's the same. <laughs> what? Did I actually? Oh, I went back to what we did. That's funny. It's funny how that happened. All right, let's go back. Uh... Boy, that's hard to see, huh? Mm -hmm. Arslind is working on his PhD right now in, in uh, economics and finance. Finance, I think. Um, up, down, up, down, up, down, fib. Fine. <clears throat> Fine. See, look at the detail in this post, okay? Some of you guys say, uh, short at resistance. Here's a picture. Okay, overall, the Euro USD is, is trending at uh, blah, 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 blah. Having posted a high at blah, 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 blah. Fed Chairwoman Janet Yellen is addressing the Commonwealth Club of San Francisco regarding the rate hike. Great. Um, and if, So that'll be good. By the way, I've been to that club. Technical analysis. Technically, the Euro USD remains bearish below a double level. That blow is likely to hold below this level. Sides is the ascending triangle pattern formed. I mean, look at this. Great. What's coming up today? Euro interest rate decision, the press conference, building permits, Philly Fed. Here's the trading range. Here's the pivot levels. Here's a recommendation. Sell below 665, take profit at 590, stop loss at 680. Wow, that's tight. Right? What do you think? Look at this. Two people like that. We'll make it three. One comment. Thank you. By the way, you enjoy reading this, by the way, would you say that you are a bull or a bear? Well, you can see that he's selling it. So I guess one would assume bearish. All right. That's good, right? Can you guys leave more likes? You're not even reading the uh, posts. Wow, only 12 people, huh? There's 100 people in the room now, but only 12 people even look at the post. That's, I don't, I don't get it, guys. I think that's, I think that's worthy of thinking about. Sorry. I think this is worthy of thinking about. I think you could at least like it. I think even better, you can leave a comment, you know? All that kind of stuff. You can see the the, the, the channel. He, he doesn't even mention the channel. You could ask about the channel, you know, all that kind of stuff. But they're thinking, he thinks it's going to rally up a little bit and then drop. I mean, come on. I mean, this guy's, what? Arslan spent 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour doing this for you, right? Housing starts 1.226, uh, better than expected. Jobless claims 234, another good jobless claims. The uh, weekly four, the four week average is still 256, but going from memory, I think we've been hitting the 230s uh, two or three weeks in a row now, right? So the weekly four week average has got to drop significantly. Canadian November manufacturing 1.5, better than expected. You would think CAD would go good on that, but CAD's still getting crushed a little bit. There's some price action on USD CAD. It's having some troubles. Okay. 
And so we got the press conference going on. So I think what I'll do is. Uh, <sighs> um, I think I'll end the recording, but we'll we'll hang for a while. Right? Am I right? Did the press conference just start? I mean, what are they going to do? Yeah, nothing. And how long are they going to do it? For longer. We're going to definitely do nothing for longer. So I want it to go down. I think it'll go down. Uh, I think I'll prepare to go down. But I wouldn't be shocked if there's some sort of up. Philly Fed, 23.6. Whoa, that's a good number. Uh, initial dollar strength so far on the good uh, jobless claims, good housing starts, good Philly Fed. Maybe the dollar comes back the very next day. So anyways, uh, I'd like to see euro dollar tank. I'd like to see euro dollar tank, but euro dollar is going straight up like a rocket ship right now. Holy smokes. Euro, euro yen going up, euro dollar going down. God help us all, huh? So I'll, I'll stop the recording and maybe we'll just kind of hang for a while. As long as, uh, as long as you're nice and share your pleasant, uh, positive energy. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average.